by the grace of Christ. Let us read now from the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Amen. A church that is very blessed. A pastor back then that is called was Polycarpos, a holy man of God, who was tested and he died tortured by beasts during that time. But we know and believe that the things that God writes for His churches and revelation are for all of us for every moment, especially for the latter days. Many consider that this is a historical uh, history of the Church of Christ. That is, from the beginning, the first apostolic church, that is. Then it's the persecuted church. Then the worldly church. Then the church of uh, re reconciliation that is dead with a great reward, then the church of the latter days of Philadelphia, and the backslidden church afterward. There isn't a, this may be this case as well, but this isn't a matter for us today. What matters is the Word of God is directed to us. And we today shall think and stand as a church of Smyrna, because we will see that we have many common things in these latter days. So the Lord sends to the angel, and if we believe that the interpretation is that the angel is the church, is the pastor of the church of the, the angel is the church, the pastor of the church, forgive me, then we say that the message is for the angel and through him to the whole church. And it is revealed to this church, he reveals himself like the first and the last, as if everything is in him. Truly, everything is in Him. There is nothing that is out of Him, out of His will. There is nothing. There is nothing that He does not know. There is nothing that doesn't happen because God permits it and does it. He is the first, but He is also the last. And we are somewhere in between. In His will, of course. But He has another beautiful characteristic. He is the one who was dead and now is alive. If he didn't, hadn't died, there would be no resurrection. If he lives, it's because he died before that. But he died not the way that he wanted man, Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. But he died the way that he who sent him wanted. He who begot him by the Holy Spirit and Mary the Virgin. He who called him, you are my only begotten son, who is in the arms of the Father. The one that he called the firstborn son over all creation through his resurrection. So he died, he lived, and he died according to God's will, the will of his Father. And God raised him 
with the exceedingly greatness of his power through the Holy Spirit. And not only did he raise him up, but he placed him above all authority and power and principality. And he placed him over all name that is named, not in this age, but also in the age to come. And furthermore, he submitted all things under his feet. And he made him head over all in the church, which is the body of Christ and the fullness of him who fills all in all. So because he died the way that his father wanted him, for that reason he lived again and he is alive today and he lives forever and ever. So that with boldness, he said, to me has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So this Lord Jesus sent this letter, this revelation to this church by saying that I, I know all your works. I know the works of every one of us. All your works. All of them. Your thoughts, your desires, your struggle, your prayer even, your seeking and your anxiety and your fear, your trial, I know everything. Nothing is out of the first and last. Nothing can be found out of Him. Everything is within Him. The walls of your life are inscribed on my, my palms. Every detail of your life is inscribed on my palm. So I know your tribulation, and I know that you are in poverty. You are in difficulty. You are in wretchedness. You are in affliction and misfortune. But I am informing you now that you are wealthy. And your wealth is not earthly, but heavenly. And you are wealthy, and only Christ can say this because I know your works. And I know your tribulation, and I know everything. Furthermore, I know those who blaspheme you and reproach you. And abhor you even. Within and without of your close environment. I know this. I know those who laugh at you and are, and are ironic. They wound you. And they hurt you. And I know that these people say that they are children of God as well. But I am telling you that they are lying. And now, my dear brethren, God comes to do something that is very interesting. To reveal His plans. To reveal to the church of Smyrna the things that He is intending to do. Because he is a God who did, does, and will do everything. Don't be afraid at all from the things that you're going to suffer. Don't be afraid. I 
I do this. I permit this. I bring it. Don't be afraid of the things that shall come. Don't be afraid of the things that you're going to suffer. I inform you with all certainty now that the devil, I permit him, the devil, I permit the devil to throw some of you into prison that you may all be tested. What does prison mean? Taking away your freedom. This means I don't do whatever I want. I do whatever I am able to do in a very limited environment. I don't eat whatever I want. I eat whatever I find. I don't sleep wherever I want. But I sleep wherever I can find. Furthermore, I don't think whatever I want. Prison is a heavy thing. When the devil does it, permitting with the permission of God, the prison of the enemy is very heavy, very harsh, but necessary. Not in injustice, not in hatred, not by chance, but with a specific plan. And the first thing is so that you may be tested. In the tribulation of the other man, be careful. God is testing you. In the prison of the other man, be careful. Because God is testing you. In the misfortune and the troubles of the other, be careful. God is testing us. Because we must be found approved. But not only for us. There is one thing that this blessed church doesn't have. And the church doesn't have these things because God, Christ doesn't confess it. It doesn't have patience, this church. To the other churches, you see, he says to Ephesus, for example, next to it, you suffered, you have patience, you've labored. To all the church, in all the churches, God sees that you have patience. Or Smyrna and the pastor of Smyrna doesn't have this characteristic. But it is necessary. We are in need of patience to do the will of God so that we may enjoy the promise of the Father. So we need patience. The church of Smyrna needs patience which it doesn't have. So, sorrow produces patience, but sorrow is not for a long time. It's for a while. It is, it is big, it is painful, it is a prison, but it's just for a while. It's for ten days. <laughs> but they, ne they won't pass easily. It's for a short while. A tribula the church doesn't need more than ten days of tribulation and the angel of that church so that, they obtain that so that they may obtain that which they lack, which is patience. They don't need more tribulation than ten days. It's enough. But if you do not learn to be patient... How will you become faithful to the end? Because it is necessary, because the Bible says, He who suffers till the end shall endure. He who endures till the end will be saved. Forgive me. If you become discouraged, if you cannot stand to continue, how will you reach the end? If you are tired of running with the, with the footmen, how will you compete with the horses? Because through the natural life of ours, God works our spiritual perfection. Through the misfortune of Job, God worked in him 
that which no other man has possibly. Until now you heard me with your ears, but now, Job, you will see me with your eyes. Nobody saw God and lived. And we do not know how he saw, how Job saw God from now on. But he promised him. I am not happy, Job, with you being straightforward, fearing God, keeping from evil and righteous, greater and perfect than all your contemporaries. I am not satisfied, Job, with you just listening to me with your ears. I want you to see me with your eyes. And now, my dear brethren, there's a crucial question for us. Difficult. Let us not hasten to answer it. Do you want God to make you see Him with your eyes? Don't be in a hurry to, say, to answer. Don't hurry. You see, my brethren, it isn't necessary for us to make the decision. It has been decided by God. Please be seated. It is not necessary what I said for us to seek it. God has decided on His plan. And these latter days, I will open the eyes of the blind. He will make those who do not see be able to see. He wants to create a church that is blessed, that is glorious, that is holy. Without a spot or wrinkle or any of the church. A church that is ready for the rapture. It has been decided to no longer hear with our ears the word of God and the glory of our Lord. But with our eyes that we see His person, His face, and live the glory of His resurrection. Grace, 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 mercy. But just like God gives mercy to us, and we test them many times, in the same way, God tests us. Because it is written, and the Bible cannot be cancelled, that in judgment, he who doesn't show mercy, mercy, judgment upon this person will be without mercy. And only mercy boasts against judgment. Tribulation, sorrow of ten days, so that patience may increase, and so that the hearts may be tested. Because God wants the whole church of Smyrna to be upgraded, to be blessed, all of them without any exception. And when we understand this we must understand today my brothers and sisters that we have to be patient we have to be patient in our affliction we have to be patient in the affliction of the other person we have to be patient in everything that comes in our life that we haven't understood that we do not expect it that we do not imagine but God is able to do this and by being patient let us have a perfect work. Perfect work. And as we said, perfect begins from humility, so that we may find grace by God. And it is sealed with the bonds of perfection, which is love. But among these things, 
There are all these things that God, through His gospel, has taught us, teaches us, and will continue to teach us. So, be faithful to death. To the end of your life. How patient must I be until the Lord comes to receive us? Until when? Ten days. Until Christ comes to receive us, we will be patient. Patient in our affliction. Patient in reproach. Patient in accusations and blasphemy. Patience in imprisonment. Patience in everything. Ours and our neighbors. Let us not let the one who is tested. Let us not leave him. But what is needed is have mercy upon me. Have pity upon me, says Job. This is what I need. Pity me. I need mercy and love. The one who is tested needs mercy and love. But if you are tested, you need patience and perfect work. To the end. Because then, the crown of life will be given you. The honor and the glory from Christ Himself. For that reason, today whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we all need to have trained ears. To hear closely. And carefully. Because this is how we will overcome. It is a struggle. The race isn't over. It, is, it continues. A race in things of this life. A race in family things. A race as a father and a mother. A race as children. A race as, ch as brothers and sisters. A race as a church. A race as a child of God and the presence of God. A race in prayer, in fasting, in seeking the face of God. A race that is non stop, that is harsh, which our Lord Jesus Christ describes as you, shall, you must deny yourself if you want to come after me. First of all, deny your thoughts, your opinion, your ambitions, your bitterness, your angers, your fears, your hopes, your ambitions. You must deny yourself. Pick up the cross that Christ has prepared for you. And then, you can and must follow Jesus. You can and only then you must follow Christ. And you will overcome. Don't become discouraged. Be faithful to the end. Because he who overcomes will not partake in the second death. Because he who overcomes will partake in the resurrection, the first resurrection. And because, my dear brethren, it is good for us to wish, I wish for you, and let us wish and pray that we will meet each other in the first resurrection.